My DM and group decided to start an evil campaign. Something I didn't really want to take part in, and in hindsight, I should have not joined at all. My character was in a group that contained a barbarian cannibal, a witch that poisoned wells on whims, and a wizard that wanted to take over the world. I was playing a rogue. In our party's downtime, which was spent in a city the wizard wanted to take over, we each did our own thing. The barbarian started an underground arena where he ate all the losers. The witch and wizard experimented on slaves, and my character stalked a young girl. That's it. Just making high checks and watching a young girl from a distance. Whatever my intents were, I didn't reveal them, and this made everyone feel what I consider unreasonably uncomfortable. He's making me feel unreasonably uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> the barbarian who enjoyed describing the different parts of the human he ate as supple or juicy was the first to tell me out of character that I was fucked up. The rest of the group chimed in, but when I reminded them that no one said anything when the witch injected demon blood into the pregnant slave's belly in an attempt to artificially create a half demon and ended up just poisoning both the mother and the fetus, they grudgingly kept quiet. <laughs> the DM, as if to try and dissuade me from my chosen course, had the young girl's life be remarkably uneventful. She woke up, had breakfast and went to the academy where she studied. After classes, she went home, had dinner, studied some more and went to sleep. After six months of in-game time, the barbarian had a small group of cannibalistic gladiators as his underlings. The witch had successfully started a part demon breeding project and the wizard had infiltrated the high council of the city and had started secretly administering a highly addictive drug. My character had learned the young girl's name, knew her favourite foods, saw which students she got along with and even had a pretty good idea of which boys fancied her. At first I had thought that the rest of the group was uncomfortable with me stalking the young girl because they thought my character was doing it for sexual purposes. Slowly I had realised it was because over the course of the game sessions they had all started to care in their own small ways about this studious little girl. Though their characters did horrible unspeakable things to people, those people were all nameless strangers that none of them saw as humans. My character, however, was getting to know his intended victim, carefully and diligently, with the rest of the group slowly getting to know her as well. By the time the wizard had full control of the city, his player knew that the little girl wanted to study exotic plants, especially flowers. The academy that he now had complete control over was her favourite place in the world, and her worst fear was if something ever happened to it. The witch had minor demons raping slaves in secret chambers within the sewers with many of their foul progeny spilling out onto the streets above. A few of these chambers were dangerously close to the roads the young girl took to get to school. Though thankfully for her, the monsters only came out during the night. The barbarian had been tracked down by a trio of bastards he had spawned many years ago, each of them seeking to kill the father who had abandoned them. After the barbarian had killed and devoured them, in the end the player knew less about his character's own children than he did about the stranger that the party's rogue had decided to stalk. By then, everyone had started to suspect that I had no ill intent towards the girl. I had done nothing to interact with the girl, nothing even remotely involved with her, besides being a stone throw away from her as much as possible. The barbarian proposed a theory. In that, my character's only intent was to hone his stealth skills during his free time and that I, being unwilling to actually commit to being evil, had chosen a mildly evil-themed approach. I didn't refute this theory. I'm getting worried now I didn't refute this. Okay. After that moment, the group seemed to actually take interest in the young girl, from a callous perspective. They were just using her to provide their characters with someone they could be good towards, just to create a greater sense of depravity in the evil they committed. From a kinder perspective, the players were good people at heart and just couldn't be evil to the young girl. The academy was provided with extra funding, and a set of greenhouses were built for the exclusive use of the students. The demon blood experiments were now under close supervision, with nightly patrols to help eradicate the escaped specimens. The barbarian, straightforward as ever, simply approached the girl, gave her a rare pod of plant and told her that if she ever wanted anything she could ask him for it. In the following months she became a sort of mascot to the group. Though all their methods were evil, they now justified their actions by saying that they were for the benefit of this young girl, who they secretly, and not so secretly, doted upon. I have a funny feeling where this is going. 
At first, only the barbarian was on speaking terms with the girl, but after the wizard took an official position as governor of the school and the witch soon followed after him, they all came to know the girl, more than they had simply through my character's observations. Our campaign was slowly, ever so slowly, shifting in alignment as the players began to question their character's methods. As they grew closer to the young girl, it became harder and harder to conceal their experiments and activities. At first they only stopped the most obvious ones, but eventually the die-hard evil grip had shifted to a rather neutral, if not particularly good, party. RDM, who loved character arcs and unlikely story progression, praised my character for introducing an element into the story that allowed a group of evil people to redeem themselves, as he described the young girl walking home from the greenhouse. The DM took a moment to also say that he had suspected I had always planned to eventually turn the evil campaign into an ordinary one. Laughing, I told him I had never had such an intent, and then told him how my character silently emerged from the shadows, stuck towards the girl, and stabbed her in the neck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> Zero to 100. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Join a game of D&D because why the fuck not? GM seems cool. Players are varying levels of autist but otherwise aren't horrible people. First session rolls round. Encounter goblins as their first encounter. My barbarian runs up to cleave them in half. Get told to roll fortitude. Why? Just do it. Roll a 13 on fortitude. You inhale a dust that smells of rotten tomatoes. Okay. Never heard of this effect but whatever. Eventually kill the goblins then DM rolls some dice behind the screens and chuckles. A goblin bursts from your chest. Wait, what? You breathe in the spores of a goblinoid, which erupts from their body when they take damage as a chance to form in a new goblinoid and erupts from the victim's chest. The fuck? Why didn't you tell? You didn't rule nature. Wouldn't my character have known not to get close to these things? Your character's not smart enough to know what a goblin is. Pissed off, begin rolling up a new character. Insta-killed after first combat. This time I roll up a ranger with above average intelligence with goblinoids as my favourite enemy. DM looks annoyed for a moment but lets it slide. Get ready to be integrated into the party properly. Things go off without a hitch. Nobody tries attacking me or stealing my shit or whatever. Get welcomed with open arms. Go into town for a bit to resupply before heading out towards our next point of interest. Along the way we encounter some goblins. Oh boy here we go. My turn comes up. I make my attack roll. Your bonuses don't apply here. What? Excuse me, you clearly said that these were goblins. Your character doesn't know that though. Besides, they aren't actually goblins. The fuck? Yeah, people call them goblins, but they aren't actually goblins. What an actual dickhead, like a dickhead. I know! Like, what, what the fuck's he trying to do? <laughs> yeah, people call them goblins, but they aren't actually goblins. They're a variant of the orc subtype. What the fuck's that meant to me? I know the boy's just a bit of a dickhead. <laughs> And you're telling me that my ranger that lives in the woods and fights goblinoids wouldn't know the difference? Of course, because he isn't smart enough. Now I'm pissed. So would I. But I hold my tongue, do my attack roll anyways and kill the party. If the other players are mad, they aren't showing it. Most are avoiding eye contact or fidgeting in their seats. Campaign's hitting critical overdrive, so I decide, fuck it, and start having fun with the DM. After a couple more encounters with goblins, one of our melee guys got killed from breathing in a goblin dust. Later, we make it into town and are beckoned by a young woman, an elf, of course. Am I smart enough to know what an elf is? What? I'm asking, am I smart enough to know what an elf is? Everyone's looking at me funny, but I don't care. I've long since stopped giving a fuck. Yes, you know what an elf is. Cool. Elf beckons us towards the tavern. Am I smart enough to know what a tavern is? DM tells me yes. I say cool. In response. So you guys walk through the door. Am I smart enough to know what a door is? <laughs> Honestly, he, he, he just he, needs he played with. Like, you know. I can see the faintest outline of a vein on the DM's forehead as he curtly replies. You know what a door is? Cool. Anyways, you're all led to a table. Do we know what a table is? One of the other party members asks. Yes, you know what a table is. And you sit down. What's sitting? <laughs> Another party member asks. You know how to sit, and when you do, you sit down. She asks you, uh, what's a question? <laughs> Another party member asks. DM is noticeably pissed, but the mood has become much lighter than it was earlier. Every word the DM asks is interrupted with questions on whether or not we know what it is. <laughs> Eventually, the DM gets up from the table, packs away his notes, and leaves the table. Meanwhile, we're all still laughing like idiots. 
The DM eventually told us over Facebook that he was cancelling game for the foreseeable future and then deleted us from his friends list once someone asked, what's a Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> he fucking deserves it. <laughs> yeah, he fucking did. Like... So look, boys, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I know this is a bit different, but look, we're working with it. As you guys know, for most of you guys know, complete channels completely demonetized there may still be ads running but youtube has completely cut me off from it sadly so uh, i think the biggest reason for that is the text of speech so if any of you guys are like wondering what's going on it's the text of speech i'm sorry um it's just not possible to do it anymore so like i hope you guys enjoy the voice acting i i enjoy it more so i do be honest with you i think it's a lot of fun and like, you know, it's nice because I get to pick out the stories and then I just set them in front of Megan and then she leads them. So you get some actual, like, you know, good responses, I think. I think it's really good. I really enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoy it too. But like, I don't want to keep you too long. Um, if, you, if you're missing out on the normal stuff that I normally do, check out Thread Flash for my second channel. Go ahead, subscribe. Um, but for the meantime, this is what we're doing. And it's not until... 15th of September that I can reapply for monetization on this channel so that's another couple of weeks away at the time of recording but look hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video